Hi class, it's Bill Berry with our first week's introductory video. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what these videos will be like and then we'll jump into the first demo. So let's get started on our language basics in Java week one. First thing let's talk about briefly is what's in and what's not going to be in these videos. I'm not going to use these videos to introduce every topic that is in your textbook. I don't want to replicate that and it doesn't make sense. Most of the topics you already have a basic idea about from your previous programming experience in classes or elsewhere. So these videos do not replace the text. And they don't, they don't just regurgitate what's in the book either. They do assume that you've finished the reading and maybe done some of the practices. You've done some basic stuff so you're ready to figure out how to apply it. So in these videos I will demonstrate how to apply it. So taking these things and using them in context, maybe in a little different way, maybe in a little larger setting. So something that tells you how to apply what you've learned and in the process we'll talk about some of the basic concepts but the projects will be sort of the driver. Uh, the other thing is I want to make these short and concise. I like to keep the videos under about 10 minutes for in most cases so I'll stop and make you know break them into pieces if it makes sense based on the content. So I want to make them short because it's easier to replay them when you want to for review and also you can consume them in one sitting. I don't want you to feel like wow I've got to take time for these. I want them to be kind of on demand easy and quick. So that's what's going to be done in these little videos. So for this week, to demonstrate the concepts that we're talking about in all the different chapters of reading that you're going to do, we're going to do some demos. The first one is displaying a customer's information, name, age, and balance. And this will cover a bunch of concepts like variables, literals, data types, etc. that you see here. Uh, we don't have user input yet, so we'll wait for another day for that. But uh, that will help us to get started with some very basic stuff. Second one we're going to do is a payroll program design. So we're going to talk about procedural decomposition and static methods and how to break things down in a very broad way. And then the last one that we'll cover is the sum numbers. So we'll talk about definitive, uh, or sorry, definite loops. We'll talk about methods, parameters, returns, and all sorts of good stuff that has to do with that. All of the things in this week are very basic building blocks that you need to get started in Java. And again, most of the concepts, or many of the concepts, are ones that you've done before. So uh, let's get started on our first example, which is displaying custom customer data. So what we have here is a, a desire not to get things from the user but to just <clears throat> store these things in variables like a name and an age and a customer balance uh, in different data types and then display it on the console along with some nice descriptions so they're easy to read. So that's what we're going to do in this example. So to get started with that I'm going to start a new project in BlueJay so I'm going to double click the BlueJay icon. I'm going to snap it up here in the corner. Thanks Windows. I'm going to then start a new project and I'm going to put it on the desktop and I'll just call it week one for now and I'm going to say create. Now remember that creates a little project and it shows us the object or the class browser up here. We don't have any classes yet so that's fine. Uh, we're going to create a new class and, uh, and then we'll get started with that. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it again week one just for fun. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. In fact, let's, uh, let's create a special class for this thing. Let's say uh, employee data. That's fine for now. All right, so that creates the class. We can double click it to edit it then. And again, I'm going to snap this into the corner. I'm, I'm going to uh, replace most of what's here. So I'm going to just delete everything from here down uh, because that's stuff that we don't really need. Now, we're going to see later why it's very useful. But basically, uh, I'm going to start typing uh, just a very basic description of what goes here. So you'll see later why it's very valuable to do this stuff. For now, I'm just going to type it in because I'm going to be a good citizen. 2015, 12, 25. Yes, it is exactly Christmas Day. Um, and then I'm ready to start my class. Now, we know that for all of our programs, it's just going to be typical for us to create a function called public static void main. And then it's going to have the following inside par uh, the parentheses. I'm going to say string open and close square brackets args. 
I'm going to then close my parentheses, I'm going to open curly braces, add some space, close curly braces, and then come back up. Remember, that's in the just the way it is category. We're going to talk a lot more about what we'll do with that later, uh, but for the moment it's just required. Once we cover parameters, it'll make a little more sense. Once we cover objects, it'll make even more sense, but uh, just type that for now. Uh, so now let's create some variables for the customer data. So the first thing we're going to want is a customer name. Remember that uh, we've got some basic data types um, and uh, string is not one of the, the primitive elemental data types, but it is one that we need to use. And remember that in Java we start with the type and then put the name of the variable. So in this case I want a string, notice it's capitalized. I'm going to put the name of the variable like customer name. I'm going to then assign it a value. You can create the variable and assign it a value on the same line. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, I'm going to then type the literal Fred Jones and I'm going to put it in, remember, quotation marks, not in apostrophes for Java. If you put quotation marks in Java, it means something else. It's a character, not a string. It means something very different. So we want a string for this. And then we're good Java programmers. We type a semicolon at the end of our statements. So that creates the variable and stores the name Fred Jones. I'll do the same thing. I want something for the customer age, and I'm going to assume that that's going to be a whole number, so I'm going to say int, and I'm going to give the name of the variable customer age. I'm going to use good camel casing, and then I'm going to say, uh, let's say that we have a system that returns a number date, kind of like Excel does, and let's say that we've calculated the difference between today's date and the customer's birthday as being 19436. Right, so that's a, a number that's not very useful to us, so we probably want to do some calculations right on the same line. We probably want to divide this by 365 right, to get the customer's uh, approximate age. And then again we put that. Now, we have to think about not only have I specified integers here, yes I certainly have, but is the result of this division going to be an integer as well? So that's a really good question and we'll explore that in a minute. So we're going to think about that um, a little bit later. We also want to have a customer balance. This is going to have a decimal point in it, so we'll probably use something like a double. A double is the standard thing you're going to use for floating point values. It's the you know, standard size for these things. And then I'm going to type something like that for the customer's balance. So cool, I have set those things up, I've created the variables, now let's just spit them back out so that we verify everything's working. Remember to print things out, you're going to use the system library, within that you're going to put the use the output namespace, and then you're going to call the println method, and I'm going to type a little label, right? So we know we could do something like this and that should work, but I want it to be a little prettier. So what we can do to get this kind of label is we can just put a string, name and then I'm going to you know put this and I'm going to use that as my little label and then uh, rather than using like you might use in some other language like in in um, uh, Python you might use a comma we're not going to use commas here we're going to need to to have only one thing inside the parameter and as a parameter to the print lin, and so we're going to concatenate. So what we've asked Java to do is to concatenate a string with another string and it says cool string concatenated with string that yields a string so cool I'm gonna do that. I recommend highly because uh, BlueJay does not give you as you're going along information about syntax errors, I recommend that you fairly often hit the compile button. If it says saved and no syntax errors, you're in good shape. If it tells you there's a problem, then of course you fix it. So we do that and then to run it, I'm going to swap back over to here. I'm going to right click this, say void main string. Right? I'm going to pr provide no nothing here, just hit enter, don't worry about this for now. And then you'll see indeed I get Fred Jones. Now after I do this I'm going to clear it because I want to make sure I know what's different when I go to do the next thing. So great, I've done that and now let's continue to print out our other information. Print lin. Now I want to do the same thing here. I'm going to say age and then I'm going to say cust age. And last but not least, it's not out, print lin. I'm going to do customer balance and then I'm going to say plus cust bal so now we've got all these things and because I'm this way I like to line things up so they'll all appear the same on the output. So I've got all that. I'll compile it. We'll go back to the 
object browser in the main project screen. I'm going to show this. I'm going to run main and I'm going to see what the output's going to be. So I get name. Fred Jones is 53 years old and that's his balance. Now notice it says 0.8 not 0.80. Uh, that's for another day, so don't worry about formatted output at the moment, but everything seems to be working. One interesting thing here is the division of an integer and another integer results in an integer. So Java says, I'm cool with that. Now, notice we'll get a little bit more interesting if we take something like this and we say, hey, to adjust for leap year, I want to divide by uh, 365.25. When I go to compile that, Java is giving us um, not an annoying, but actually a very helpful method that says, hey, there is a potential lossy conversion here you're dividing an integer by a floating point number and when I do that, when Java divides that way, it yields a floating point number, not an integer. And then you're assigning that floating point number to an integer variable. So you're going to lose some data here. Java doesn't like to do that. It wants you to be specific and say, hey, if you're going to lose data, I'd rather you actually tell me explicitly that you understand that that's going to be a problem. One way to fix that is to do a cast, which you just have to do this way. You say, hey, in parentheses, hey, I want you to make this thing an int. And what is the thing? Be careful because you don't want it to just make the first thing an int. You want to make the whole result of the division an int. So in parentheses, I say, hey, I want you to make an integer out of the division, and then I assign it to this integer variable, and that makes Java happy because you have understood that it's lossy, and you have approved the loss by taking the integer, right, by casting it as an integer. So we can compile that, and then we can certainly go run and see whether everything is still cool. We'll run main again. Right, and then we'll go and look at our terminal window, and of course that's why I like to clear it so you don't see that. Fred uh, leap year hasn't helped Fred in this particular case, so he's still uh, he's still 53. All right, so that shows you a little bit about uh, several important concepts here, and that is creating variables, doing some calculations thinking about some calculation results when you uh, when you do division and you have different types of numbers involved. <clears throat> a little bit about casting, a little bit about concatenation, where we're concatenating strings and different data types. Notice that Java is smart enough to say when you concatenate a string with an integer, I'm going to make everything a string, right? So it will coerce this data to become strings, and we'll talk more about that later. But it's very common. It's, uh, you know, most, most kinds of primitive data types and also objects, as we'll learn later, can be coerced into strings because it's just a common uh, way to communicate data is a string result. So that's a very super simple program, but it talks about a lot of things that are kind of fundamental in getting started. Hopefully that's a helpful little example. We have two more examples to cover, but since we're running a little long on this video, I'll stop here, and then we'll continue on the next video to hit our other examples, which are going to be the payroll program and summing the numbers. So keep watching, and thanks for watching this video, and uh, we'll check you uh, in, in the next video. See you soon.